I want to believe you hear me. Yeah. Someone can somebody tell us what somebody can say that he learned he learned from the book of Job. Can somebody tell us what somebody can say that he learned he learned Yeah. What somebody learned How have you benefited the way you have benefited from the book of Job? Two, who can tell us what was the reason why Job found himself in such a state, the man being righteous, then all of the sudden all this befell him? Can somebody be having an answer? So before that, you will have to sing. Please feel free. You will have to sing as we prepare ourselves. You will have to sing. Feel free. You will have to do the singing. Feel free. We baba wangu we baba We baba wangu we baba Nimeona leo Nikushukuru bana nimeona leo Nigo shukuru baba we baba wangu we baba we baba wangu we baba nimeona leo nise masante baba nimeona leo Ani se masante baba We baba wangu we baba We baba wangu we baba Nimeona leo Nikushukuru baba nimeona leo Niku shikuru bana nimeona leo Nise masante baba nimeona leo Niku shikuru bana we baba wangu we baba we baba wangu we baba Nimeona leo Niku shukuru bana nimeona leo Niku shukuru bana I mukama wangu mukama Davielero Zenkweva ze mukama Davielero Yesu Zenkweva se mukama I mukama Wange mukama Mukama Wange mukama Davielero Yesu Zenkweva se amina Enda bielero, Yesu nzekwe vaze amina. I mukama, Yesu mukama. Mukama, Yesu mukama. Enda bielero, Yesu nzekwe vaze Davielero Yesu, kweva ze amina, davielero mukama. 
Queva se aminam. Shu Wata Mairiga. We sam. Wata Mairiga. We sam. The angels bow before him. Worship and adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Worship and do what a mighty God we sang. Hallelujah, what a mighty God we sang. What a mighty God we sang. <clears throat> the angels bow before him, worship and adore him. What a mighty God we serve. As we come into your presence, we are so happy. For in your presence there is anointing, anointing the praise of When we come into your presence, we are so happy. Jesus, in your presence there is anointing. Anointed breath the yo is no by power, is no by power, by my spirit says that this mountain must be removed in Jesus. By my spirit, says the Lord. My help, my help, my help, my help, my help.
we bow before you draw. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before your throne. We glorify your holy name. Lama Kawe. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before you, throne. We glorify your holy name. Count your blessings, name them one. By one, count your blessings, say, for the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Yea, Shasa, rise you, for the Lord has done. He is no by power, it's no by power, it's no by might, it's no by mind, by my spirit, says the Lord. This mountain shall be removed in my heart. Says the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Sister Ashley, I believe it's your mom or you. You can go on. Thank you, Jesus. Morning, Papa. Morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome all. I love you all. I'm going to sing. Okay. The flashlight. Okay. Um. Hello. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you are in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to us. Show to the cross. My death be from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you are in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My bed to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. 
e baba e baba e baba poke asifa 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 e mungu e mungu e mungu poke asifa e mungu e mungu Poke asifa, e Jesu, e Jesu, e Jesu poke asifa, e Jesu, e Jesu, e Jesu poke asifa, e Baba, e Baba, e Baba poke asifa, e Baba, e Baba, e Baba poke asifa, e Jesu, e Jesu, e Jesu poke asifa, e Jesu, e Jesu. Wenza nguwa mekokolewa na dam yake mokozi. Dunia itateketezo, itateketezo na mot. Ewe baba. Ewe baba yangu mungu wangu wa uruma ombi langu lisiki niandike na miniandike katika kile kitabu cha uzima wa milele ewe baba ewe baba yangu mungu wangu wa uruma ombi langu Lisiki niandike na miniandike katika kile kitabu cha uzima wa milele wenzangu wameokolewa na damu yake mokozi dunia Ita teketezwa, ita teketezwa na mot. Ewe baba, ewe baba yangu, umungu wangu wa uruma. Ombi langu lisiki, niandike, na miniandike. Ekatika kile kitabu. Cha uzima wa milel, ewe baba, ewe baba yangu, mungu wangu wa uruma, ombi langu lisiki, niandike, na miniandike, katika kile kitabu, cha uzima wa milel. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Indeed. Many have been saved by the blood of Jesus, including you and I. Thank you so much, our sister and your daughter. What a wonderful choir. Yeah, we bless God. Uh, we have been, uh, I would love us to take this step to come to total conclusion of the book of Job. Yesterday I said we are able to watch the movie, but it seems there are still some more questions, right? Most especially, I remember uh, Sister Irene, there is a chapter I was not really content. She was not content. It was Job 41, if you can remember. where she also asked, please, can I quickly go and read it first? Sister Irene, I don't know if you hear me. Yes, Baba, I remember. Yeah, so I would love this. Uh, we can quickly look at that 41. You can read it first, and if you have that question, you ask it so that we make sure we are okay. Then I will okay. ask some questions, like two or three. So let us go to that 41. Yeah, Job is is a for me is a very difficult book 
if you did not explain, there's nothing I could really understand. All I could have in my heart is questions and confusion. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It says, this is, sisters and brothers, this is job 41. I'm sorry for my squeaky voice. It's early in the morning. We just woke up. Okay, it says, yeah. can you pull in Leviathan with a fish hook all tied down its tongue with a rope? Can you put a cord through its nose or pierce its jaw with a hook? Will it keep begging you for mercy? Will it speak to you with gentle words? Will it make an argument with you for you to take it as your slave for life? Can you make a pet of it like a bird or put it on a leash for the young women in your house? Will traders butter for it? Will they divide it up among the merchants? Can you fill its hide with harpoons or its head with fishing spears? If you lay a hand on it, you will remember the struggle and never do it again. Any hope of subduing its faults, the mere sight of it overpowering, no one is fierce enough to rouse it. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has a claim against me that I must pay? Everything, everything under heaven belongs to me. I will not fail to speak of Le Levitian's lips, its strength, and its graceful form. Who can strip off its outer coat? Who can penetrate its double coat of armor? Who dares open the door of its mouth? Bring about with fearsome tip. Its back has rows of shields, tightly, tightly sealed together. It is so close to the neck that no air can pass between. They are joined fast to one another. They cling together and cannot be parted. Its snorting throws out flashes of light. Its eyes are like the rays of dawn. Flames stream from its mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke pours from its nostrils as from a boiling pot, as from a boiling pot over burning ribs. Its breath sets coals ablaze and flames dart from its mouth. Strength resides in its neck. Dismay goes before it. The folds of its flesh are tightly joined. They are firm and immovable. Its chest is hard as rock, hard as a lower milestone. When it rises up, the mighty are terrified. They retreat before it is thrashing. The sword that reaches, it has no effect. Nor does the spear, all the dart, all the javelin. Iron, it threats, it threats like a straw and bronze like rotten wood. Arrows do not make it flame. Slingtons are like sharp to it. A club seems to eat but a piece of straw. It laughs at the rattling of the rams. Its undersides are jagged pot, pot's heads, leaving a trail in the mud like a threshing sledge. It makes the depths churn like a boiling cauldron and stirs up the sea like a pot of ointment. It leaves a glistening wake behind it. One will think the deep, hard white hair. Nothing on earth is equal. A creature without fear. It looks down on all that are haughty. It is king over all that are proud. And this is the word of the Lord. As I'm reading, I almost like stopping, like still to ask questions. 
like number one, Papa have to give you credit for showing us Levathian how how uh, this creature looks. For sure, I remember you showed us on the video. If I'm not wrong, it looked like a, a crocodile, or can I say like a, how do you call this? Whatever which Americans like. Um, there's that animal which flies, which is very, very, very like, like kills and like they're different kinds. Some eat people, some eat only plants. I saw it in the movie, I don't remember uh, the name. Um, so in short, this animal is way uglier than that. This Levitian, very, very, very ugly. And it is very strong. And like when it opens its mouth, fire basically comes out. Is no steel. It's just like everything about it is like so scary, very ugly, very hard, very whatever. And at the bottom, it's at the end, it says like he's the king of the proud. Every time I read it, I keep on thinking like this creature, we hardly see it because it is in the bottom of the ocean or the sea, and maybe not every ocean. You know, like there are some whatever places where it can be found. It has to be those oceans which are very, 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 very deep. And I'm sure where it cannot be disturbed. So, in other words, just God was trying to show. He created this, he created this strong animal, which nobody can handle which nobody can come near. Nobody can just like kill. Here on earth, we are afraid of the lion. Oh, the lion is so whatever. But this is a, another creature in another level, like a scary animal in another level. So in other words, God was rem reminding um, Job, he's the creator of everything from the most powerful today. To the, from the most powerful, strong, uh, to whatever, to the to these little tiny insects. He's God. That's why he's God. So he can do anything. He can change anything to anything. Um, uh, but at the end, Papa, I'm still struggling. With one word, sisters and brothers, if you know this also, uh, this is a way so that we can share. Why did really Job suffer this much? I know, yes, that, uh, Satan wanted like to tempt Job so that Job can cast God or say something back about God. But Job was still like faithful, even if he was whatever until the last minute. He's just like whining and complaining further. Why do you have to do this to me? Why do you have to let this happen to me? I'm a good man. I've done this. I've obeyed you. I've followed the rules. But at the end of the day, we all know as a human beings, unless you are Jesus or God himself, all of us sin in a way. You know, all of us are sinners. My question, sisters and brothers, which sin did Job commit? That's what I, I, I try to understand, then I get confused. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. I would love us to feel free, anyone. We have now we have one question. Our sister, you are able to read and go through it. Then you mentioned that mighty creature, monster. There is something when you look at God, you get surprised, you know. The tiniest insect that even like my, our eyes cannot see, they still obey him. And this mighty creature or oh, this monster, when you look at it, I would love to play screen again. We watch it very well. Then... You see how it is. It is very mighty, very big, that you cannot even describe how this thing is really great. Praise God. 
you wonder that despite of all we can imagine we can imagine there are still this being is still under the count of God Almighty. So I want you to watch it, then you can see exactly what the what God described. Please have a look again. According to the Old Testament, there is a giant creature in the ocean's depths. His name is Leviathan. According to the sacred text of Jews and Christians, like all creatures that walk on land, fly in the air, and swim in the waters, Leviathan was also one of God's creations. This creature is described in the book of Job, where God himself describes this colossal monster. The beast resembles a huge marine dragon. Men would be consumed by fear whenever they spotted him. No man is brave enough to dare to awaken such a creature, since the idea of defeating it would be nothing but an illusion. God himself describes the mighty Leviathan as a colossal creature, the bearer of incredible power. The huge monster creates massive waves when moving. His powerful mouth has dreadful teeth. His back is protected by rows of shields so close together that not even air can pass between them. Leviathan has a powerful blow that throws flashes of light. There's fire in his mouth and smoke in his nostrils. When this beast rises, even the most powerful run away terrified because swords, spears, and arrows can do nothing against a creature who has his chest as hard as the most resistant stone. Nothing on earth can compare to Leviathan's power. But such a creature owes its existence to God's desire, since, like every human being, Leviathan can only have their food due to the grace of God. The beast was... Praise be to God. Yeah, I believe we have seen it again. You see how the Bible describes it, how great and mighty that being is, that monster. Nothing on earth can be compared to it. It is only God provide for it food. He said it can only have food by God's grace. Now, here the question came by our sister Ask. She still asks like anyone else. Job, we know him as a righteous man, but what was his sin that led him to suffer that much? Because we remember, when you look at the life of Job, you see the Bible maker understand that Job lost everything. So what will someone say concerning that? What will someone say? This is the same question also come to someone there. You find yourself, you go to church, you do what is required of you as a Christian, but still you suffer. Someone will ask, what is that woman's sin? Praise God. Someone will ask that question. Ah, she's a Christian. Ah, we know her. She's a, a, a God-fearing. But why is it hers? Why are her suffering? Anyone will answer? Feel free, please. Okay. I will come in as we make it um, to help each other. To help each other. Yeah, Sister Irene, if you can read again, Job chapter 1, 
verse 6. Job chapter 1, verse 6. I want you to see Job's sin. Why Job had to suffer. What did Job do? What, okay. was, what did he do? Yeah. Okay, Job 1. Verse 6. From verse 6. Okay. It's Job 1 from verse 6. It says, One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, Satan replied, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout, uh, spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he'll surely cast you to your face. The Lord says to Satan, very well then, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the princess of the Lord. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby and the, the Sabians attacked at the Sabians attacked and made off with them they put the servants to the sword and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you while he was still speaking another messenger came and said the fire of God fell from the heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. When suddenly a mighty wind swept it from the desert and struck the four corners of the house, it collapsed on them and they had them. And I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. At this job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell on the ground in worship and said, naked I come from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by changing God with wrongdoing. And that's the end of the reading. I thought I'm going to read them off, but it's finished. Okay, thank you. Now, I do think you can see, what do you find well, by your reading? What, what do you discover? Because you see, the Bible tells us that Satan, when the angels gathered, let me say, when God had meeting, then in the process of him having meeting with the angels, Satan also around, then God asked him. So if you're according to what you read, what, is, what do you discover as the reason why Job went through what he went through? It's because of Satan. Once uh -huh. God gave, uh, gave permission, he said, like, you can touch. Anything which, which, uh, anything which Job has, but do not touch him. 
you know, from there, Satan took to his hands and, of course, like, met these people to do all these things, like, you know, these camels, all these animals, or whatever, all the things which happened, happened. The, all the negative things. Yeah. It was Satan who did that. But also there is a question. Why did... Yes, why did God allow, it, especially killing Job's sons? Because this is very painful, and He knows it. That's why I get confused. I'm like, oh okay. yes, I can understand like the animals and whatever, but taking away his children, but still Job shows like he was still very faithful. He knelt down naked and cried to God. You know. Uh, and he was still like worshiping God and praising our father, you know, which shows like he really has like really high faith. After this, why couldn't, why couldn't our father just like protect him or save him from this so that he doesn't have to go through so much pain? And is it wrong to be 100% pure? I thought we are supposed to be like be the best Christian we can. Like we give the best without sinning. We just like be like job. We should be the example of job. Amen. Yeah, before I answer that, I want you to watch this again. I love that when I hear the question because you may ask yourself, why did God decided not to protect Job's sons, then we'll find the answer be where you read. First, watch this briefly. We have no weapons. Our master does not wish for us to resist. Our lives are more important to him than his animals. Job is a good man. The Lord's blessing rests on Job because he's a righteous man. Let us hope the Lord's blessing includes protection for Job's servants. I agree. Nevertheless, flee for your lives as the Sabians come. They are master swordsmen. And the Lord's hand of protection be over you. Noah teaches us that the righteous will live and the wicked will perish. Those who love the Lord will prosper, but suffering will come to those that do not know him. But is this always true? What do you mean? I think of Bayana, who has lost his sight. He depends on others for his food, yet no complaining about his lot in life. His heart is pure as gold. Why should he suffer and we not? There may have been a time when his heart was not pure. And who can know the innermost thoughts of a person, even if he appear righteous to us? If God punishes the wicked, then it must follow that suffering is a sign of sin. What else can we conclude? Listen to this. God is truly good to those whose hearts are pure. But I had lost my confidence and nearly lost my faith because I became jealous when I saw the proud and I saw how good things happen to those who are wicked. They are strong and healthy. They do not suffer as other people do. They do not have the troubles that other people have. They wear their pride as a necklace and violence as a robe. Their hearts pour out evil and their minds plot wicked schemes. What is it? Thought I heard something. Sounds like an animal. I'm gonna go see. Perhaps it'll be our supper. Thank you. 
It is nothing. Behind you! Ah! Omri! Erastus, run! Leave him. To the animals. <laughs> Father? Father? Your father is dead. It is not safe here. We will return for your father. They laugh at others and speak of evil things. They are proud and plan to oppress others. That is what the wicked are like. They have plenty and are always getting more. How is it that the wicked prosper, but some who are righteous suffer? If it appears that the wicked prosper, it is only for a time. And if the righteous suffer, there must be some sin for which there has been no repentance. I agree. Remember how the passage starts. God is indeed good to those with pure hearts. But heed the next part. Is it for nothing then that I have kept myself pure and committed no sin? O oh God, you have made me suffer all day long. Why does the writer talk about suffering when he has kept himself pure? Maybe it is just his opinion that he is pure. Remember, if we suffer, then the fault lies with us. Sin is detestable in the sight of God. In other words, God must have been trying to tell him that there's unconfessed sin in his life. So you're saying then that when the righteous suffer, it only appears that they are righteous? God knows their heart. So God sends suffering in order to bring about repentance? That is correct. The passage ends with an admission that we cannot always know the mind of God in such matters. When my thoughts were bitter and my feelings were hurt, I was as stupid as an animal. I did not understand you. Jubal and I just returned from a successful trip. Some of the food that's being prepared for us today is from the market of Hamath. The wind has come up fast. I sense a storm coming. 
If so, I hope Jabin brought enough food for several days. Perhaps that is only a small gust. Jabin, what was that? I'm not sure. The wind is strong. Katura! The fire has gone out. There is something evil in the wind. Get the women and children under the table. Kadura, get down. Since I have you, what else could I want on Earth? God is my strength. He is all I ever need. It sounds like he thought that suffering might come. That we can trust him in spite of our pain. Masters, Job, the Sabians, Omri is dead. Jail. What are you saying? Omri and I were watching a small herd of cattle. The Sabians came and they struck Omri with a sword. And they've taken all the cattle. Omri is dead? He was going to check a noise in the bush. As he was returning, they came. And his son watched him die. Masters, I beg your pardon. I've never seen such a thing. Fire has rained out on his sheep. Job, all three herds are destroyed. All destroyed? Job! What more can there be? The Chaldeans came with a large army. We fled before them as you commanded. But the others were struck down by arrows and all the camels taken. I am the only one to survive. The others killed? All the animals destroyed? There is nothing left? Abdil. What is it? You have come from Jabin's feast. There was a windstorm. The house collapsed. And then it was gone. What of my family? All have perished. All perished? My children? My grandchildren? I came with nothing into this world. And now I shall leave with nothing. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Now you can see. I would love you to read again, Cesarine, verse 9. Because verse 9 will answer the question you asked. Thank you, Jesus. 
We can see uh, that. Yeah, verse 9. Verse Please. Job uh, first, uh, 1 verse 9. Yeah, it will answer the question you asked. Okay. Why God did why God allow Job's sons to die like that okay. without protecting animals? Yeah, read it please. Job first verse nine. Hmm. It says, Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, hmm. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he'll surely cast you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from, out from the presence of now the Lord. Yeah. yeah, you can see that it has nothing to do with God. Satan himself said to God, Job, is, you think he's worshipping you for nothing. You have protected him. Everything he does, he prospers. We know very well Job was wealthy. Like the movie part I have just shown you, you can see that after God have allowed Satan, he say, stretch your hand and touch on everything that he has, then Job will curse you. This is the same thing that happened to us. Satan knows that many a times as Christians, we say praise God because everything is good. If you are married, you are happy in marriage, children are doing well, business is doing well, you are healthy, then Satan will come up and say, ah, that so-and-so is praising you because you have protected him. Everything you want, you have made it possible. He has it. But try to touch what he, he has, you have given him, then he will curse you. That's why you find out a Christian, you will find yourself in a problem that you cannot solve things that you don't have the end. You may not even explain why things happen against you. It's the same thing. So that's why you find Satan will touch what you have. He may touch your children, he may touch your business, he may touch your marriage. So if you are a kind of person, base your faith on a result after prayer, you are likely to doubt God. Why? The more you pray over things, the more things become difficult. So I want you to have this in mind. Even our brother Paul, Apostle Paul, the Bible says, Paul said that I ask God three times to take away this affliction. But the Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient. Praise God. What does that mean? That sometimes you may be a God-fearing, but a challenge and trouble, God may allow it. It's not God's will to allow to make you suffer, but it's Satan. Satan intention that when you have a challenge, you will doubt, you will blame God. Satan's plan is to see you and I will blame God. If you are sick and you are Christian, you will say, I think this God don't love me. Because I pay my tithe, I pay my offering, I'm a good, I'm no longer do bad things, but still I'm suffering. Okay, look. My brothers and sisters around there, they are not Christian, they don't go to church, they live bad life, but they have good, they, they have a lot. So the answer is that God allowed it to prove to Satan that Job is not believed worshipping him because he has everything. Even if he take all that he has, Job will still worship God. I don't know if you get me, please, sisters and brothers. Yes, we, for myself and Ashley, we do. Yeah, so that is the reason. So, I do believe, you know, uh, you are not here, 
last time uh, my sister it was my sister Agnes had a revelation whereby you ask a question concerning the same book I think three times and I was insisting you should go back to YouTube so it made me understand that there are still some questions concerning the book of Job because the book of Job it takes God grace to understand so you can see even when we have been watching this movie, you see that when Job was busy, I, let's say Job like, he was like busy now explaining to his brothers. At the time we explained, they say, why is it that righteous suffer? Why? So the situation came, now for Job not just to explain with the word, but to explain by his response to the situation. When he was telling people how the scripture says, now he's seated like this, they come and tell him, you know, your animals have been taken. The animals have died. Ah, your people have died, your children. What would Job did? Job did not cast God, but he kneeled down and said, naked I came, and naked will I return to God. So it's the same thing to us. You may be busy reading the Bible. Then a temptation will come to test your faith in God. Are you believing God because of good marriage? Are you believing God because of healing? A true child of God, you say, whether God you heal me or not, I will still say you are my God. Whether you give me husband or not, you are still my God. Whether my husband decides to divorce me, uh, you are still my God. Whether I'm poor or rich, you are still my God. When you seek like that, it means you have shown Satan that all these things is God who give me. I can live without them, but I cannot live without God. Money can go, family member can go, but God is not to be allowed to leave you and I. Any other question before we proceed? So I think we have the answer why a righteous man can suffer. For a righteous man suffer as a result of to test his faith in God. But the wicked suffer as, a, as their suffering is lead them to death as judgment. We who are believing God, our suffering is that to draw us close to God, to test our faith. We know that there is no promotion without tests. So what is our test? Our test can be sickness in the body, I have told you many a times, God uses me to pray for you. I may pray for you. Many a times you see, you come with a terrible pain. God used me to pray. And when I pray for you, instantly that pain goes. But still, you find out that I may have pain. That I pray, I pray, don't go. It doesn't mean because I have pain, I will not pray for people who don't have, who have pain. You will come, I pray for you, you get healed. But you find that myself, I have the pain, but the pain is not going. Amen. Any question? Please feel free. I wanted to give a comment, Papa. I'm sorry, I'm not able to put up my hand. Feel it. It's okay, it's okay. A children of God, like, I know job situation, it is like in another level for us human beings on earth right now. We will, basically, if we go through all this, we will give up. But what I know for sure, once you've tested God, once God's presence is in you, Oh, once God has visited you, believe me, 
you do whatever you have to do to be on his side, on his side. Of course, all what Job went through was way, 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 way too heavy. But at the end of at the end of the day, God, He's the one who created all of us, including Satan. And God is the only way. God is the only way we can get whatever we need in this world. We can get our healing, our wives, our husbands, our children, our wealth, anything which we want, anything good comes from God. Of course, we already know anything comes from Satan because we hear those stories like people who get like wealth from Satan. It is temporarily, is for a few whatever, for a few, for a few months or years or whatever. After that, like really bad things start happening to those people. But God, once he has visited you, he gives you something, he gives you for good. And you, God is not, uh, I remember when we are reading these Bibles, Bible whatever study, there's somewhere where we read like God is God. God is not like us human beings who change their mind, you know, if God heals you, he heals you completely. God uh, visits your family and decides, even if maybe your children go through little, little sickness here and there, he'll, he'll always be there to protect you. No matter what, it does not matter how your child will be sick. He'll still protect this child. He'll still, that child will still come out of this sickness and life like continue. So which means through job, like in this earth, I realized, we can have like little, little suffering here and there. If we have this kind of suffering, we should not forgive, forget, forget God. We still have to call on his name. You know, we have still to remind him, daddy, help us with this. Daddy, we are going through this. Can you solve it? Can, we are going through this pain, do A, B, C, D. And surely he'll come to solve whatever problem which we have. Um, my, I, I wish my mom, like I was at my mom's house. She told me a story, that story every time when I go to their house, I remember, I just want her to repeat the story over and over, over and over. When my, um, my mom was like around like six years old, the grandmother from the father's side was she was young, not too old, you know, like once people start having like grandchildren, they're not that old, you know. So she, she and her friend, they went like to the forest. This is like those like long time, like they live like, uh, you know, like poverty in Africa, like you have like little houses, like in the middle of nowhere. So her and her friend, they went like to, to the forest. I don't know what they went to do. Oh, no, no, no. They went to look for their husbands because their husbands had taken the, the cattle or something. They did not come back. So they were worried that this tribe in Kenya called Maasai, maybe the Maasai must have taken the cattle and maybe killed them or tried to follow, tried to follow them or something. So they are just like worried. They went to the forest. They are calling they are calling their husband's names. Uh, then like, they remembered like the only way like to get like a uh, solution to it is to pray. So in the middle of the forest, they sat down like under a tree and just they started praying, praying. They are like, God, show us the sign. If we have to go home, cause it was raining so heavy, what we can do? We are only women. We cannot stay in the middle of the of the jungle of nowhere. Like if they can go home or whatever they can do, whatever prayer they gave, all of a sudden the rain like started raining more heavy and heavy. Like there was a lot of thunderstorms. Then something crazy happened. It's as if they were struck 
I don't know if they were struck with the thunderstorm. Then they were taken to this place. Where they went to this place, they were told do not tell anybody. They were shown like they saw like a lot of sheep, or different different things. According to to the to my grandma's friend, they were told not to tell. But if they were going to tell, they were going to die. So when she came, she told every she told the husband said, "My husband, I'll tell you the the secret where we went." It was heaven. We were told we we will be wealthy, we'll be this, and we were given A, B, C, D, but we are not supposed to tell anybody. When they came, uh, that lady passed away. Uh, people tried to ask my mom's grandma, what did she see? She said nothing. She never said anything. She died when she was 96 years old. So, um, but in her life, she had a lot of sheep, a lot of cattle. Anything she planted in her, her whatever, her farm, like did very well. So up to now, her children are still like very, very well. It's not like from even like going to school or anything, just like from farming. And so I think like they were blessed. That family were blessed in a way. One day I'll ask my mom, she, she, she speaks English, she'll tell us this story again. Um, in real life, what I'm trying to come to is the Holy Spirit or God can visit. Even if he does not have to visit physically, yes, these things happen. These things happen, people, it's not like people are crazy. If these things do not happen, who is the lady who used to visit me? every night when I was sick. Anytime I have a question, if it's about the Bible or if it's about going to the doctor, who is this lady who could come dressed up in uniforms of my job, the uniforms which I wear, we get those uniforms from the machine when we go to work, I can wear anything. I can wear either home clothes or I can wear just scrubs, but when I get there, I have to wear uniforms from the machine. The lady used to wear this machine, uh, these uniforms. When she comes like sits beside me, she's very tall, very white. I see, to me, I see somebody from human resources. Like I know her, but I cannot question her like who she is, but I knew it was my friend. But this lady used to come only the time I was sick. And after I got better, after she told me go to work and everything, this lady, I've never seen her. Now I keep on asking, where did she go? What happened? Then uh, when I, I mentioned, of course, to my doctors, they wanted to put me in psych medication. They say my head is going crazy. When I try to explain to these of American friends, they are like, something must have gone wrong somewhere, maybe with chemo. Maybe you need help. Maybe you are hallucinating. No, I know it was God's <laughs> angel. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You guys are my best friends, even if you don't know. So here is where I get a chance to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spiritual things can only be understood with the spiritual people. Otherwise, people will say you are going mental. Yeah, of course, she only appeared at a time you needed her. Why? At that time, no one was there for you, but you needed someone that can be with you in that point where like every hope is gone god is present he uses anything to reach out to us praise god god find himself more comfortable when we are left alone that's why you see whenever we go to sleep at that time we are not disturbed or distracted he will appear in any way he will send his angel, his spirit will minister to you to let you know that in the midst of what you are going through, there is hope. Yeah, thank you. Jesus, I saw the hand of uh, Sister Jane. Let us hear you too. Because our target is to see that because this job life is our daily life we are experiencing every day. We cannot deny it. You ask yourself, I am a Christian. Why should I suffer? 
I'm not drinking, I'm not humanizing, I'm not doing this, but why again will I have to suffer? So whenever you find yourself, just know your suffering may come, maybe there are some unrepented sin or there are some fault or mistake you or you are doing without knowing can result to that. If not, can come as a result of testing, trying of your faith. Are you trusting God because of healing you? Then he stop, it, did, it happened not to heal you, will you deny him? And that is where many Christian backslide. You can see someone say Jesus is good, they follow God with all their heart. You can see really they are really committed because they are trusting him for a particular thing. But after this particular time that that thing is not happening, they stop going to church, they stop praying, they backslide, they go back to Egypt. So, based on the book of Job, it is example to all believers that God allowed things to happen for only reason he knows. That's why we have been told many a times, oh, I will encourage someone. When you are going through challenge, don't blame anyone. Quickly run to God and ask, Lord, have mercy on me. Please, if I have sinned something that I have wronged you in any way, I don't know, please expose my weakness and deliver me. Then God with his loving heart he will make sure that he let you know where your error is, where you need to correct yourself. Then you pray over that and he will restore you. And even though he doesn't show you, don't give up on him. Praise God. What does that mean? As you follow God, things are going well with you. You have a, things you have been doing. Then when you encounter a challenge, continue doing the same things that you used to do while things are going well for you. Satan will be ashamed and he will flee away from you. Praise God. We remember our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said that when, the, when Jesus was baptized, he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Then, the Bible says very well, he was led there to fast for 40 days and 40 nights to be tempted by Satan. As soon as he finished, ended his fasting, the Satan came to him and asked, if you are a child of God, turn this stone to bread and eat. Of course, if Jesus said, you bread turn to, you stone be bread, it would have happened. But what do we learn from that? Certain first temptation come as a result of our stomach. Most of the sin or the temptation we fall into come as a result of stomach issue. If you are somebody driven out by appetite, <coughs> you can become a prey for Satan. Most of people you see killing each other because of stomach. They eat, but they are not satisfied. Praise God. Yeah, we saw Sister Jane, hand is down again. Please. Any other question concerning Job? So I believe now we are okay with the book of Job, right? <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Any question concerning Job, please? Before... Yeah, okay. For now, there may be no question. 
but please wherever you feel like you have question concerning job please feel free to reach out to me i'll be so happy to be able to use to be used to answer because when i come in to answer i have a chance also to learn something so whenever you find yourself into problem i pray that god reminds you of job he lost everything but he did not cast job he did not cast god he remained faithful this shows us that you can be a righteous man a good god-fearing man or woman and find yourself into trouble but it's not because you have sinned <coughs> thank you jesus yeah if there's no question our sister irene will sing for us this song then i pray Ewe baba, ewe baba yangu. I hear that song in my heart. <clears throat> okay. Ewe baba, ewe baba yangu, mungu wangu wa uvuma, ombi langu lisiki. Ni andike na mini andike katika kile kitabu cha uzima wa milele ewe baba ewe baba yangu mungu wangu wa huruma ombi langu lisiki ni andike na mini andike katika kile kitabu cha uzima wa milele wenzangu wameokolewa na damu yake mokozi dunia itateketezwa Itateketezwa na moto Ewe baba Ewe baba yangu Mungu wangu wa uvuma Ombi langu lisiki Niandike na mini andike Katika kile kitabu Cha uzima wa milele Ewe baba, ewe baba yangu, mungu wangu wa uruma, ombi langu lisiki, ni andike, na mini andike, katika kile kitabu, cha uzima wa milele. Baba tuko hapa Baba tuko hapa Yesu tuko hapa tuko hapa kwa ajili yako tuko hapa kwa ajili yako Mungu tuko hapa baba tuko hapa Yesu tuko hapa tuko hapa kwa ajili yako Tuko hapa kwa ajili yako Jesus we are here Jesus we are here Father we are here we are here for you thank you jesus godfather godfather jesus christ all the angels we love you so much thank you 
Amen. Thank you so much indeed. We are here because of you, because of him. Stretch your hand and ask Jesus to strengthen you as he strengthened Job because that job station, only God, only God. Ask him to strengthen you in the midst of what you are going through that you do not give up. You do not give up on him. Even if you happen <clears throat> to remain by only you, let your faith remain strong in the midst of all you are going through. Let your faith remain strong. Ask him to help you. Whether everything turns against you, you remain strong. You do not curse him. You heard the Satan say to God, Does it job trust you for nothing? It's because you have put an edge around him and all that he has. That try to touch what he has, then he will curse you, which means he will curse you on his face, on your face. Certain plan is that when things happen to go wrong, human being will quickly curse God. That is his intention. Ask him to help you even when things life does not make sense or meaning. You remain trustworthy. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. I'll read Second Corinthians chapter 12. I don't know if you can quickly find it, Sister Irene, Second Corinthians chapter 12. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, Second Corinthians chapter twelve. It says yeah, from verse seven. From, from verse seven. seven. From verse seven. Mm. It says, "And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort." We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure. Uh, Am I reading sister? the right part? Second, second Corinthians, second. You know, we okay. have first Corinthians and second Corinthians. Okay, let me see. Yeah. You see, two then Corinthians. Yeah, two then Corinthians. That's what I tried to do. Yeah. We tatere tatara ra pite keri ere wu sharamati eke wu sarabakasi te wu. Okay. Yeah, just take your time. Actually, in the Bible. You'll see two, then Corinthians. Two, then Corinthians. Sit 
just where you are reading, you just continue opening, sister. Yeah. Where you are reading, just continue open. You'll end up then in the, the, in the next book. That is the one. Because you are reading First Corinthians, so you can't continue open, open, open until you reach to the end of First Corinthians. Then the next one is the second one. Okay. I'm trying to open in another Bible. Yeah, it's the same Bible you open, it's okay. Ewe baba, ewe baba yangu, mungu wangu wa uruma, mbi langu lisiki, baba. Okay, this is first for Second, keep on going. Galatians. We went to Galatians, Papa. Okay, yeah, we are in Corinthians, second, the letter. You said uh, which chapter? 12. 12, okay. Then you go verse 9. Okay, start from verse 7. Okay. Uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12, starting from 7. 7. Okay, it says, but to keep me from being puffed up with pride because of the many wonderful things I saw, I was given a painful physical ailment which acts as Satan's messenger to beat me and keep me from being proud. Three times I prayed to the Lord about this and asked him to take it away. But his answer was, my grace is all you need, for my power is great when you are weak. I'm most happy when to be proud of my weakness in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I am content with the weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties of Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I continue, Papa. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sister. So you can see here, Paul, I don't know if you understood what you read. I want to repeat it again a little bit. Okay, repeat, no problem. Okay. But to keep me from being puffed with pride because of the many wonderful things I saw. I was given a painful physical ailment, which acts as Satan's messenger to beat me and keep me from being proud. Three times I prayed to the Lord about this and asked him to take it away. But his answer was, my grace is all you need. For my power is greatest when you are weak. I'm most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I'm content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Uh, to me, I understand like it doesn't ma ma matter how much like we have to suffer, what we have to go through. Sometimes maybe some maybe say, say sickness, malaria can come beat our children down, or our children can go through something. When our children are suffering, we are suffering. But at the end of the day, God will fix this issue. So even if your children are sick or your husband is gone or your wife is gone do not give up like on yeah. praying to god always like when something comes which is negative which comes from satan to beat you down 
all you need to do just continue praying to God and ask God to solve the uh, solve that um, problem. Sometimes negative things happen to our lives, then we become strong through those things. So even if something is you are going through something which is negative, don't let it like make you like give up or say you cannot pray to God. No, this is the time you need to pray more and ask God to give you the solution. And for sure, he'll come through for you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. So you can see here is Paul, the apostle. He said he asked three times. Three times, I believe it's like 300 times, he was asking God to heal him because he was given a thorn on his flesh. Which means the Bible does not describe what exactly it was his problem, but he was given a thorn in his flesh. Maybe it was a particular sickness that was incurable. But remember this Paul, God, was, God used him to heal people, to open blind eyes, to heal sort of manners of sickness and diseases. But he had a thorn given to him by the messenger of Satan. So the Lord answered him to him and said, all you need is not even healing. All you need is not money. All you need is not family. All you need is not fame. All you need is not prosperity or wisdom. All you need is my grace. Why we need that grace is that even though you are sick, but by grace of God, you are able to endure that sickness. By grace of God, you are able to overcome that challenge. You are, by the grace of God, we are being sustained. So all we, desire, all we need is grace. Not this friends, no. So if Paul had such a trouble, what about you and I? In that problem you are in, what you need is grace to help you to overcome it. Because once the grace of God is upon you, you may be sick, but people see you smiling. You may be suffering with a deadly disease or sickness, but because of grace of God, you are walking up and down. It is only grace that sustains us. If it wasn't God's grace, we wouldn't be existing. That's why I see Whatever you have, it is by grace of God, not because of your education background, not because of your family background. It is by grace of God, you and I, we have gathered. It's by grace of God, I can be able to speak to you. It's by grace of God, you can be able to listen. Praise God. So, all we need is grace. So ask God to activate that grace that can sustain you. You need his grace. Ask him to activate that grace to help you in the midst of what you, need, you are going through. Ask him. He say, my grace is sufficient. Because of God's grace, even if you are sick, that sickness will not kill you, but it will bring you better off. Ask him to give you more grace to activate that grace that you are able to stand you are able to overcome. you are able to pray even when there is no food on the table you are able to pray while you are going through persecution through tribulation in the time we are in time we need God more than ever it is by the grace of God Father, in the name of Jesus, it is your grace that we need. We activate that grace. Your grace is sufficient. We need that grace once again to be able to counter every challenge. Receive that grace once again. That very grace was given to Paul. That very grace receive it in the name of jesus as i stretch my hands towards you all 
in the name of Jesus, the God that was able to help Paul, was able to help Job to the end. May the Lord stand with you in the midst of all you are going through. Some of you feel like giving up. Some of you feel like it is over. Whatever it is, rise again in the name of Jesus. Rise again in the name of Jesus. Whatever Satan may have deposited in you to make you struggle, I command it to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. That challenge, that disease, sickness incurable, I command it to be healed in the name of Jesus. Expose our weaknesses, O God, and deliver us in the name of Jesus. Expose our weaknesses and deliver us all in the name of Jesus. That spirit of nightmare, wherever it is, out and never return. Every evil hand pointing upon your affairs of your life, I command it to be paralyzed. Every mouth or evil speaking against you, I command it to be silent. Every veil of darkness that covers you, I command it to catch fire. Marks of rejection, pain, agony, catch fire in the name of Jesus. Every gathering that have gathered against you, scatter by fire in the name of Jesus. That says the Lord, surely they will rise from one way, but in seven different ways will they scatter. The Lord says, indeed, they will gather, but it's not from me. So whoever gather against you, they will fall in the name of Jesus, because it is not by me. In the mighty name of Jesus, be it in the sea, be it on the land, they have gathered concerning you. I command them to fail, to fall in the name of Jesus. Whatever Satan may have planned, to try or to tempt you as a result of the scripture, to test your faith, I command it to be destroyed completely. That mountain that you're experiencing, I command it to crumble in the name of Jesus. I command that mountain to crumble. Voices that you hear from Peter of hell, I command them to be silent. That voice of pain, I command it to cease. Voices of agony, I command it to cease. Darkness around you, I command it to bow. The word of God that says, let there be light. I command, let there be light in your home. Let the light of God shine in your muscle, in your bones, in your system. Let there be light in the name of Jesus. I decree calmness, calmness in your work, Calmness in your ministry. Calmness in everything has to do with you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. I decree every disappointment to be appointment in the name of Jesus. Every mess to be message in the name of Jesus. Every close to your every close door to success be open in the name of Jesus. Every closed door to prosperity be open in the name of Jesus. Everything that hinders your healing, give way in the name of Jesus. That cause of nightmare, catch fire in the name of Jesus. Recover whatever you have lost through and believe. That lost dream, I command it to be restored. Recover what you have lost through and believe. Be restored in the name of Jesus. That inner joy, inner peace, be restored. The Bible says that God restored Job twice. Whatever you have lost, I command it to be restored by the power of resurrection. Be restored in the name of Jesus. That good health that has been taken away from you, I command it to be restored in the name of Jesus. That perfect marriage that has been taken away from you, 
I command it to be restored by the power of resurrection. Whatever you have lost, I command it to be restored by the power of resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That finance you have lost, I command it to be restored in the name of Jesus. That destiny, your career, that have been taken away from you, I command it to be restored by the power of resurrection in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. You are restored. Thank you, Jesus, by the power of resurrection. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God we have come to the end of our job book. I believe now we are okay. Join me as we say salvation together. Salvation is word abiding in us and we abide in it. Remember, better is not good enough. The best is yet to come in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all days of our lives, and we shall do in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, our sisters and brothers. Shalom. May the peace of the Lord be upon you until we meet again.